recently was steadily teaching myself pandas, which is a Python library that lets you work with really, really big data sets. And it does so in data frames, which are kind of like tables. So think of like Excel spreadsheet type of things, except it's a lot less intuitive to use. If you load in a data frame, so you have one of these tables, it can be kind of hard to view it. And so these are some tips for how you can view it. We're going to talk about head. We're going to talk about head.t, which lets you like flip the rows and columns so that the columns don't get cut off. Um, we're going to talk about how you get a little bit of summary statistics with info and describe, and also how you can load some demo data sets. So this is not going to be a tell-all tutorial or anything. These are just some quick tips that can save you a lot of time um, and that come in really, really handy. So the first thing you need to do is you're going to need to import pandas. Um, so I import pandas as PD. It's kind of standard convention so that now you can call on pandas functions with just using PD. Um, I also imported numpy, matplotlib, um, and then the other one you'll need is seaborn for the demo data. Um, so you can import seaborn as SMS and more on this in other posts. But you're going to have to run this first so that you have um, you have pandas and you have seaborn at least. Um, you won't need the matplotlib and stuff for this. But anyway, the first thing is if you need to get some demo data. So you, if you've watched some tutorials or seen things about using Python, you're probably familiar with these data sets. Um, and so basically, Seaborn, it's this Python library that you can use to do a bunch of cool graphing and visualization, but they also have some demo data sets. To see which demo, which data sets are available, you can do sns.getdatasetnames, and it'll show you that you have this whole list of data sets, including um, the classical Iris and Titanic set that you'll probably see a lot. So if you do, um, you can do load underscore sns.load underscore data set, um, and then the data set name in order to get it. And know that I'm using SNS here instead of Seaborn because I've imported it as SNS, so I don't have to type out Seaborn. If you just imported Seaborn as Seaborn, it would just be Seaborn.load that data set. And so here you can see the data set. And note that I'm just viewing it here. I've just loaded it, but I haven't assigned it to a variable. So later, if I want to actually use this data set, I'm going to need to assign it to a variable, but I don't actually want to work with Iris right now. But you can see that you have a number of columns and a number of rows. Um, and so what it'll tell you here, you have 150 rows and five columns. And so it's not showing you all the rows, it's just showing you kind of like the first and the last. And later we'll see how we can just get some of the first with head. Um, just to look at some other data sets that are available, so you get an idea about the sort of range. Um, so there's Titanic, Dow Jones, but the one that I'm going to use today is penguins. And so we have this data frame that's going to tell us about different penguin species um, and some of their body characteristics, where they live and things like this. So right now I haven't assigned it to anything. So it doesn't know, like I can't call on this unless I type out this whole thing and then I'm not actually doing anything to it because it's just, it's just fetching it from the SNS data set. But if I assign it a name, and so I'm just going to call it DF, it's kind of a standard convention to call things DF, at least in like demos and things like this. But when I'm working with actual data, I'll give it a more descriptive name because I'm probably going to have multiple data frames. But this is more like generalizable. Um, and so I've now assigned it to this variable DF. If I want to actually view the table, I can just type DF. And now I'm going to see that table. And I can also use, now do things to DF in order to analyze the data. So right now it's showing me the beginning and the end of the data frame, but I'm missing all the inside information. And so there are methods I'm not going to get into now, things like loc and iloc and bracket notation and dot notation to actually get specific rows and specific columns. So I just wanted to see the first rows. To do this, I could use df.head. By default, it's going to show me the first five rows and the index starts at zero, so zero through four, and this will be the first five rows. You can also specify how many rows you want. So if I do df.head10, well now I can see the first 10 rows. If you want to know more about how to use a various function, you can use shift tab. And shift tab in, in Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook in a Jupyter notebook is going to give you it's going to give you kind of like the doc string about how to use it. You can also Google um, the, the information about the various 
various functions. But here you can see that you can put in n, where n is an integer, and here it's going to be equal to 5. Um, and so it's also going to give you some examples and things like this. So very helpful shift tab. But anyway, so that was the data frame dot head. And note that it's not changing the actual data frame. So if I go back to my data frame, it's still just like it was. I haven't assigned this to anything. I'm just show, having it show me a different portion of the data. I could also, if I wanted, do df.tail. And it's just the same type of thing where now I'm doing the last five. If I wanted to get the last 10, then what I could do is df.tail 10. And note that this is going to copy a cell and you can also use C and you can um, paste it below with B. So that's how I did that so quickly. But so that was data frame.head and data frame.tail. And so in this case, I can see all of the columns because there aren't that many columns. But in some of your real, more real data sets, you might have a lot, a lot, a lot of columns. And this is the case for some data I'm working on. I have a lot of columns and so I'm not able to kind of see everything at once. They get, they cuts off the columns. If I want to be able to see those columns, what I can do is, well, one thing is I could just get the column names if that's all I wanted. df.columns is going to give you the column names, a list of them. And for some reason, I always like think that this has the parentheses, but it doesn't. It's just df.columns. But that'll give you the column names. But if you actually want to view the columns and the, and the row, so if you kind of want to see all of this information, but you have too many columns, what you can do is df.head.t, so that t stands for transpose, and it's going to switch the columns and the rows. And this is going to make it so now your columns are rows and it will show you more of them. And this can be really, really helpful if you want to get a look at kind of the beginning of your data set. And often the beginning of your data set is enough to tell you some really important information just to kind of get an overview of what your data set looks like and whether things look like they're supposed to. So sometimes it's really easy to tell if there's something super wrong with your data set just by looking at that head. And it also gives you an idea about how you might be able to work with different columns or different rows um, to remember the order of things, where's what, um, what you have in there. So this can be really helpful. But if you want some more like statistic data, you can get various information. And so one thing you might want to know is like, how many values do I have? And so if you do, and what type of data is it? If you use df.info, you can get information about kind of the number of columns and the number of rows, the number of non-null values in each of these, the data types, so floats and things like this. This can be really helpful if you're getting errors because things are different lengths or they're different, the wrong data type. If you need to know, okay, well, what data type is it? then you can go and do df.info and it'll give you that information. So this is really helpful. If you want kind of summary statistics, things like mean um, and max and min and standard deviation, you can use df.describe and that's gonna give you information about the numerical values. So you can see it's not giving me information about like the sex because that was not a numerical value. Um, but it's going for the other things. It'll give me the mean, the standard deviation, the min, 25%, 50%, 75% max, um, and the count, which is like the non-null values. It's not actually telling you the count of various things, so don't get confused. If you want the, like, the count of various values, then you could do valued count. Um, but the count here is just the number of non-null values. So really helpful information that you can get really quickly. So df.describe, df.info, we have df.head and tail, and df.head.t to transpose the values. And remember that you can get data, demo data sets from SNS. So that's the Seaborn. And so hope that helped.